Okay, I'm rolling. You're rolling. We're rolling. Lord, we thank you for loving us, for dying to set us free. We thank you that you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Lead us, guide us, fill us again with your spirit, and we give you thanks. And we give you thanks, and we give you thanks, and we give you thanks, and then, Lord, we give you thanks in Christ's name. Amen. So we're in Colossians Amen. chapter 1. We're going to try this in English Standard Version ESV today because 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 we are. Um, and <laughs> yeah, it seems to be a little bit more familiar wording. Some people might uh, connect with the scriptures more readily if uh, we try this. I mean, NLT is good too, but uh, here we are in ESV. And we're in chapter one, Colossians 1, verse 9. We're going to pick it up in 9. We, uh, we did uh, finish off in 10 yesterday, but it, I think it bears repeating. Uh, and that'll set us up for new material. Uh, and um, here we go. Uh, verse nine. And so from the day we heard, we have not ceased praying for you, asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding. And I thought, you know, it's interesting how many times Paul steps up his prayer life when he hears about believers, uh, either for the first time or after they have, uh, quote unquote, established themselves. So here the church has already some establishment, uh, but Paul steps up his prayer life for them that uh, in a prayer is asking for what? To be filled with knowledge of his will and all spiritual wisdom and understanding spiritual wisdom and understanding and a knowledge of god's will Amen. Um, again these are prayers for people that are um at least to stage two shall we say in their walk and probably beyond that but um for, for more for, mature christians and and then it's for the fully mature too um the fact that we have uh walked with in grace with the creator of the universe for a year or six years or a decade doesn't mean that that the that we still need to know have knowledge about him walk closer to him and then have wisdom and understanding to know what to do with the knowledge um pretty amazing challenge if you ever think that you have arrived you certainly have not arrived yeah yeah <laughs> good morning yeah, linda welcome with us hi lynn yeah, it's uh, that's a certainly a big tip off. <laughs> that's where that's where the term sophomore comes in. Uh, literally broken down, sophomores is a, a wise fool, and it's interesting how, in both high school and college, uh, you talk to kids that have a attained a little bit of new knowledge, yeah, and. How, how they get this sense of well i got a handle on it all and i know it all i know better than my folks i know <laughs> you know and it's just it's just the opposite and you can see how this whole woke thing could spring out of an environment like that yes uh, because uh it's just just primed for this the specific type of pride oh gee i, I i've uh um attained this understanding and it, it's you know kind of a, a it's a, the sense of revelation for the first time and it's like this they take it as you take it as the sense of revelation for all time yeah. <laughs> and it's barely uh barely the case i had a great uh, chemistry teacher guy was ancient and uh uh chancellor professor and he used to end his lectures with Oh, uh, that's the way it looks to us now, but tomorrow, who knows? <laughs> the, under, the understanding, and he's right. I mean, science is continually changing. It um, is. And there's so much that's just so, that is so much fundamental stuff that is uh, uh, just either over, it just isn't dealt with because uh, it reveals the lack of understanding we have. And people don't want to go there. It's humiliating. Uh, that's right. So, Anyway, um, 
it's when you are uh, you're in the process of maturing that you have the good sense to realize uh okay but let's uh, let's realize how far we have to go and seek it right. and that's what he's talking about here so um uh, uh, let's see knowledge yeah spiritual wisdom verse 10 so obviously we walk in a manner worthy of the lord okay so we're Christians and we're walking as Christians in a manner worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him, bearing fruit in every good work. Remember, good works are things that were set up in advance for us to do and increasing in the knowledge of God by doing these things, walking in a manner worthy. In other words, uh, not taking license with the permissive will of God, things that we we can sort of get away with, but we're walking the line where, yeah, the next step lower is definitely sin, so to speak, but rather um, centering on him uh, and making him the center of our path, uh, fully pleasing to him, bearing fruit in every good work and increasing the knowledge by, by making, by uh, seeking this path our knowledge of the Lord will increase. We'll get to know him. So, so this isn't, this knowledge word can be used either relationally or academically. Um, and, and we want to do both. We want to know more about who God is, but we want to know God better. Uh, right. You know, right. how do you, how do you get to know somebody better by spending time with them, by listening, by asking questions, by, kind of yep. opening yourself up to them so that they open themselves up to you and that's sure. what the creator of the universe wants to do with us and that's an astonishing sentence yeah walk worthy like the uh you think about how your walk is and and do you want to walk to the edge of of god's grace no you want to stay right smack in the middle of it do you mm -hmm. want to uh, walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him, bearing fruit. And we talk mm -hmm. about we talk about fruit in terms of love, joy, peace. But fruit is also what happens when we walk the path that others all of a sudden say, hey, I want to serve Jesus, too, because I've seen how you walk. Sure. Right. Yeah. What tripped Eve up was a lack of appreciation. Yes. He did not appreciate she had nothing to compare God to after all but so he he took mercy on her for that but uh and the fact that an evil that was many times more powerful than she was entered the picture but uh the whole idea of appreciation is um if you appreciate somebody you'll pay attention to them you'll give them your attention and in that way you'll get to know them and uh that's uh that's how you expand your walk on the right right manner walking worthily so it's all interconnected there yes uh, verse 11 being strengthened with all power according to his glorious might his glorious might for all endurance and patience with joy so here he's bringing together we don't think yep. often about being strengthened with all power for patience <laughs> it, <laughs> it doesn't it seems like if I'm strengthened with all power, then I don't need that patience thing because I are powerful. But that's not. <laughs> it, it's it. The, God's thinking is just so different than mine. Yeah, mine too. <laughs> yeah. The. Uh, but it's His power, strengthened with all power, um, and here I mean that that encompasses physical as well as spiritual power, having the wherewithal uh to do what he calls you to do um and, and and enduring enduring and patience go together as uh hand and glove um to endure and to exercise patience in that endurance uh that uh, joy is not dampened but in in fact is enhanced uh at mm -hmm. the end of the uh, end of the path so picking up in 12 giving thanks to the Father, who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. Yeah. Okay, so going back to your sophomore example before, there's times in our 
in, in, there's times in our college career or our high school career where we think we know everything, but mm. <laughs> the more the more we walk through that, the more we figure out I don't know much at all. Mm. And, the, and the moment that you admit that you don't know much at all, you're free to receive the the knowledge that he has. But part of that is in giving thanks um, that sure. you would that you would that you would give thanks to God for who he is and who is transforming you into and who he's, who he's forgiven you from being, you know, that he has qualified you to share in the inheritance. Thank you, God. Thank <laughs> you, God. Um, mm-hmm. Not by, not by the works that we have done necessarily, but by his great grace and then by mm-hmm. works. And so um, that, that we can endure with patience and endurance and we can be all that he has us to be so we can make a difference in a desperate world. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Thanksgiving is all important. Um, Verse 13, 13 and 14 are a couple of uh, special verses here. Um, Yeah. This is, this is a kind of a, a synopsis, quick synopsis of just, uh, the, what, what's the essence of the uh, Christian dynamic? And it's in him. Uh, 13. Yes. He has delivered us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved son. Think about that in, in, in the enormity of that alone. Uh, he's talking in the plural here. He's talking about all believers, uh, genuine believers here, delivered. Okay, there's deliverance of the, of the group, of the whole uh, group of believers, the church, um, from the domain of darkness. Okay, the domain of darkness, the, uh, NLT, same version, uses the word kingdom. Kingdom of darkness. There is a kingdom of darkness that yes. we were in. <laughs> we were delivered. So there's a deliverance here. And then there's a transference, a transferred us into the kingdom of his beloved son. I see the deliverance as kind of a, a vertical thing from down low to up high, but up yeah. high transferred to the Lord's kingdom, the, uh, the kingdom wherein Jesus is the focus and uh, centering on him, that the transference, once we're delivered out of that darkness uh, to uh, the light uh, of the Lord himself. And um, that's... Uh, as some something of a horizontal movement uh, in there, but um, big, big, uh, big steps there. Um, yes. Fourteen, in whom uh, just to complete in, in fourteen, he uh, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. Okay, so, so we have three powerful words in here. He has delivered us. He has transferred us. He has redeemed us. And we think about how. How how powerful it is to be delivered. Uh, some some who come to Christ have had lifelong um, traumas, lifelong um, bondages of of being caught up in the world and figuring out that they can't get done with it. You see it. You see it in all kinds of different vices that people bring with them when they come get saved, and then all of a sudden. There's a day where they get delivered, or there's a day where they make a decision to be delivered. Uh, you think about the ministry of Teen Challenge, 14 months to get delivered from whatever addiction they're in, um, and not only to get delivered from it, but to become vessels of of healing and hope for others who have had the same trauma. Right. Um, he's delivered us. He has transferred us into the kingdom. What a What an incredible picture that is. Um, we've got modern science fiction that uh, allows atoms to be transferred from one place to another with a transporter or all that. And you think that's just such a cool picture for transferring us. This isn't, a, um, I don't know, I don't even know, but the vision of you step in and then you step out and you are transferred into the kingdom. And then we right. have redemption. Now, we don't do real well with the word redemption because... Uh, the thing that we think about when we think about redemption is um, is soda bottles. Uh, you get a nickel back if you bring it back to the store. 
Mm. But but redemption is so much more than that. It is it is in the culture, if you couldn't pay a debt, you become enslaved to the one to whom you owe the debt. And then if you have a redeemer like Boaz, he comes by and he pays your debt off, and then you're indebted to to not that person, but to re your redeemer. And so, right. so much so, what an incredible picture that these three words are, deliverance, transference, and redemption, um, just mind-bogglingly uh, important in our for us to understand how how difficult these three things are and how Christ has provided them. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Redemption, after all, is uh, uh, the recapturing of right. someone who has uh, racked up a debt uh, that uh, then separates them from um, the um, well, in this case, in the uh, separated us from uh, separates us from the, the a righteous standing with God and redeeming fills the gap there that we may then have get back to a righteous standing. That's Amen. forgiveness of sins achieves that. So what an amazing sentence. Those three words are four words, forgiveness of sin. Mm. Wow. You just think how how incredible it is that Christ's crucifixion and resurrection can pay for my sin and for yours. It's just, you know, wow, you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there are a lot of people have difficulty with that idea of um, substitutionary sacrifice. Um, well, some, a lot of people have trouble figure, figuring out that they're sinners. In their yeah. own mind, they're doing <laughs> right. what they think is good or whatever. Um, sure. I was preaching on wickedness last night, and there are some who know they're wicked, and there are some who have no idea how wicked they are. <laughs> and you just think, you know, if you have a moral base, then you can know if you violate that base. You know, but if you don't have a moral base, then anything you think is morally okay. <laughs> like, how can you condemn me for something that I do? I, I am an independent agent. I don't have any moral base. And that's a whole life of wickedness. And then they come to Christ and they go, oh, God, thank you for forgiveness. I have strayed so far, you know. Sure. Yep. Verse 15. No, no, no. Ooh. no we're going to need we're going to need a lot of time for 15 and 16. So, Lord, <laughs> okay. we thank you. We thank you that you have given us deliverance, transference and redemption and forgiveness of sin. We would ask that we would walk in thankful hearts for all that you've done. Transform me, O oh Lord, so I can make a difference in a desperate and dying world. In Christ's name, amen. Yes, thank you again, Lord, for your word and your spirit. And the direction you've given us here, the, uh, the uh, perspective of just how uh, magnanimous uh, you have been toward us uh in that we while we were yet sinners christ died for us amen it's uh it's just it's the kind of statement that you can just spend a forever on growing in appreciation of and so may our appreciation for you thus grow and that uh that we might follow you with a desire of willing willingness and desire to um uh, live lives that ultimately glorify you yes. in Yeshua's name. Amen. Blessings to you all. Live it out. Walk it out. He is good. Amen. See ya. <laughs>